Happy Sabbath, church family. Happy Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. On the last Sabbath of 2023? Amen. To let the Lord how much we love him. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I can tell you, a year goes by so fast nowadays. <clears throat> but you know, the fact that we're alive today... It means that we have so much to be thankful for. And even in the midst of any trials that we may go through, it's not like the Lord is somehow, is somehow acting in any way indifferent towards us. He's still in control. And he has a plan to help us in the good and in the bad. Amen? Well, I just want to, let me just thank those, all those who are visiting with us, um, those who are joining us online, and to all of our members, welcome, welcome. I invite you to, to take your Bibles in hand and to turn with me to Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Well, I tell you, I'm a I'm a faster changer than the boys. <laughs> I, I tell you, I truly have been blessed. And you know, church family, the Lord has been working through all of you throughout these years Amen. as you minister to these two young men. And all we can say is praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 16. just 11 verses and what an appropriate psalm to consider as we think about this beginning of a new year that's approaching. The Bible says, preserve me O God, for in you I put my, my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints, you are on, who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who haste, hasten after other God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips, O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is my right hand, I shall not be what? Moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. 
my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of what? At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I will speak on the theme, I have set the Lord always before me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Words cannot truly express the tremendous amount of gratitude your people feel for your faithfulness and your love towards us. Today we come to simply express to you again as a people that we worship you and you alone. You are our creator. You're the one who ordained this world and placed it exactly where you wanted it to be. And Father, you have provided the, un, the indescribable gift of your son Jesus Christ, which offers to humanity your forgiveness being accessible to every person but also your power being available. And also, Father, you have given us the life of your only begotten Son so that we might have access to eternal life. So much to thank you for. Today we just want to hear from you. And we want to let you know that our hearts are prepared, we're ready to hear your words speak to our hearts. Were there areas where we need to turn and repent and walk away from? I pray that you will give us the power to do just that and walk to Jesus. Father, were there areas in our lives where we need uh, to, to embrace you more in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? I pray, Father, that we will all see this as our top priority today. And I ask, Father, that you would take full control of my life and speak to me and through me. I surrender all that I am into your care with the one desire that is to see Jesus lifted up. So we all can be drawn closer to him. So bless us. May we gain the edification from your word today. But Father, may you also change us in the process. For we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I tried to, to figure out or try to understand what part of David's life <laughs> that we can somehow attach this psalm to. I mean, what was he going through at the time when he wrote this psalm? I I'm still searching. <laughs> but all I can say is as I think about David, and all that he has gone through, all that he went through, I see many ups, right? 
and many downs. I see many failures, but I also see many successes. Amen? Amen. When I think about David, I might not have murdered a soul. But there might be things that I have done that he did. Are you with me? I see some of the struggles that he went through in his life. I see also some of the triumphs, some of the victories that he experienced. When I consider David's life, all I can say is hallelujah. His life is a testimony to the God that we serve. Amen? Amen? When I think about Psalm 16, I see it in three phases. Verses 1 to 4, 5 to 8, 9 to 11. And what we can do is, is, is read, read each section. And then derive some of the truth, some of the teachings that God is trying to teach us and help us to understand, learn, and practice. And so let's let, let us go through the psalm together. We read it before. Now let's read it in sections. Because I believe God is about to speak to someone today, including me. And as I think about the year 2024, there's nothing more that I would like is for my life to be immersed, immersed in the things of God. Amen? Amen? Is that what you desire as well? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says, preserve me, O God. That word there, preserve, when I look at it, it's a word that has the idea of keep me. Preserve me, meaning, Lord, don't let me fall. Don't let me go down. Are you with me? Keep me where I am or extend me. But don't let me fall. Preserve me, Father. Yes, I might leak, but fill me. Hallelujah. Fill me up and keep me filled. David is saying, Lord, I'm prone to fail. Without you, I am nothing. Help me, Lord. Help me. Preserve me, O oh God, for in you I put my what? In you I put my trust. Do you know there's no other being that can really fulfill our lives in the sense of what we really need. Only God alone knows our genuine needs. Are you with me? The eternal needs, not only the temporal needs. He knows exactly what our hearts desire. And there's no other person on this planet, in this universe, that deserves our trust. Are you with me? Listen, we will never fail with God. Amen. Has God ever failed you? No. He has never failed me. Amen? Amen. And so the Bible, David said, For in you I put my trust. In the year 1996, when I gave my heart to the Lord, and started to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. I can see many places in my life where, where I still made some mistakes that I completely regret. Are you with me? But you know what happened? The moment I confess that to the Lord, there's something I know about the Lord. When you confess your sins to him, he will what? He is able to forgive us. And when he forgives, he will never use it back on us again. 
So my walk with the Lord is, listen, I'm baptized, but I'm not perfect. Are you with me? I'm on a journey to perfection. Hallelujah. And the only person who knows how to get me to that stage is Jesus Christ. He knows how to remove sin and move people to a state of righteousness. Hallelujah. I see my journey when I look back, moving away from things that I used to enjoy, but weren't right. And the things that I used to love that weren't right, I see how God turned them around to the things that I hate. Only him could do that. You know why? Because I kept my trust in him. There are many people sometimes when they come to the Lord and they face certain challenges in life, they somehow walk away from him and stop coming to church and, and, and move away from the Lord. And that is the worst thing we could do. Hallelujah. Jesus never promised a bed of roses. But you know what? He promised himself. Lo, I will be with you always. I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. We can trust Jesus. In fact, David said, Oh, my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my what? In fact, in this text here, in verse 2, he mentions the word, he mentioned the word Lord twice. Oh, my soul, you have said to the Lord. Looked up that word. It's a word for Yahweh. I said to Yahweh, the God of heaven, you are my what? Adonai. Two different words. I said, my soul said to, the, to, to Yahweh, you are my Adonai. You are my master. God, you are my source. That's what he's saying. Everything that I am comes from you. Are you with this brother right here? He's saying you are my source. My goodness is nothing apart from you. I have nothing to recommend about myself that is good except your goodness. David is a true brother here. He's recognizing that all that he has comes from the Lord. Everything. You know, the earth is the Lord and the fullness what? The Bible never said the earth is the Lord and the fullness in my pocket or my bank account. Everything we possess in this world comes from the Lord. Did you know it's the Lord who bless us all with the power to make wealth? Deuteronomy. He's the one that gives us strength where we can wake up on the Monday morning, go to school, go to work, make some money so we can bless his work and then bless our family. And tomorrow, enjoy a nice little New Year celebration. Amen. Come on, y'all. Everything we have, our families, are a gift, a blessing that comes from God himself. Amen. That's why God speaks to the husband so dearly. You know, I'm the one who blessed you with this, with this wonderful Beautiful wife and these awesome children. Make sure you love her. Are you with me? Make sure. And guess what? I have shown you how to love her. Look at how I love the church. Just take a look at how I treat the church. How even when the church is going against me and pounding at me. I am not fighting the church. 
I am loving. The, you know, love is not any kind of fuzzy feeling. Y'all know that, right? Come on, y'all. The word, actually, the word love in the Bible, it's an action word. It's all about what you do. It's what we do that shows how much we love people. And also the Bible also speaks in regards to the wife. That the wife should always be what? Respectful. And so helpful. And so helpful to the husband and to the family. And so together, when both work together, guess what happens? God is saying, that is actually my design for the family. Now other counselors, other people might say, hey, listen, this is how the family should function. But God is saying, listen, when it comes to marriage, I designed it. Man to be with the woman. Are you with me? But I also design how they should live. And when the two comes together in a loving, harmonious relationship, God is saying, listen, this is my expression to the world of what Christ can do in the hearts of people. Are you with me? And sure enough, sure enough, there are those who are not married. Maybe on their way to marriage. Are you with me? But regardless, guess what? Even in the singleness of life, God is saying, listen, you have an example of my son. You have an example of how to live a life even being single, which is a blessing for many. Come on, y'all. So many people live a single life, in fact, right there in the Bible. Chose a life whereby they, they live so that they dedicate all the resources and time that they've been blessed with to the expansion of the kingdom of God and joyfully enjoying every moment. Come on, y'all. Joyfully. Right here we're seeing where Jesus is mentioning before us that the powerhouse of my ministry to reach the world, I have chosen to work that power through the church. I could choose to do it so many different ways, but I want to do it through the church. I want people to see what the power of God can do to a person who was living a selfish life. But now their life is selfless. They're now connected with me in such a way where now they're impacting so many people. David said, for the saints who are on the what? My, sorry, my goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is my? God look upon us as the excellent one. Today you might not feel very excellent for whatever reason. You might feel that maybe my excellence has been rubbed off by some bad decisions that I have made. Some bad circumstances that I'm now in. That I place myself in. And God is saying, you know what? Don't forget my servant David. He was an excellent one, just as you. And I know how to deal with people who have messed up. I know how to come to them and show them such love and say to them, go and sin no more after I've forgiven them. I know how to pick them up and get them back on the right path. It's like the man who stepped into the elevator with Jesus, pressed the button, and both of them start going up. 
But while going up, the man fell. Reached out to Jesus. Clutched his arm. Still going up. Get up, my son. Are you with me? There's one person you must know who will do every single thing he can do to make sure that you will never be plucked from the palm of his hand. Are you with me? Can you imagine when a person give their life to Jesus, like Shane and Ian? Do you know that not only the Father is stepping beside them, along with Jesus, along with the Holy Spirit, but they have angels surrounding them. Who can be that force? I mean, I mean, God is on the move to secure and strengthen our faith. The only person, the only person who can ever be plucked out of the palm of Jesus' hand is us. We have the power to do that, to make that decision. But you know what? It's going to be with a fight. <laughs> Would you say, Sister Vivian? It's going to be with a fight. But as long as we stick with Jesus, we're on our way to glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Their sorrow shall be what? Multiplied, who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer I will not offer. In other words, people engage in a life without God, that lifestyle is filled with misery. Bible said it. Their sorrow shall be what? Multiplied who hasten after another what? Any life that is lived without the power and presence of the Lord God Almighty of heaven is a life that will be filled with all kinds of misery. Sure enough, before us, in the public, it looked so amazing. I mean, that is what I would like. That is what I would want. But certainly what goes on behind closed doors is much of what we don't see. But the Bible says, it uses the word, multiplied sorrows. God wants to save us from all of that. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants to save us from multiplied sorrows. It's not like we won't have some, right? But the, the life of the sinner who lives apart from the God of heaven, it's hard. It's hard. That's why God is saying, if you want something better, I want you to taste and see that I'm good. Nor take up their names on my lips. In other words, David is saying, that, that's a lifestyle that I want to have nothing to do with. I will not be a part of their names. I will not be praising those gods. I won't be living in any way that they are promoting. I don't want to have nothing to do with that lifestyle. I just want the lifestyle of who? Of who? Of Jesus. The lifestyle that he promotes. Oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my, and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant what? Yes, I have a good inheritance. Anytime a person gives their lives to, their lives to God and choose to live for him daily, you can rest assured that all that he has promised is ours. In other words, eternal life, it's ours now. 
Because the moment if death should strike before Jesus comes back, all we're going to do is what? Sleep. We just sleep in Jesus. Awaiting our inheritance. The resurrection. Can you imagine living on planet earth today without that inheritance of a resurrection? I mean, what would debt uh, seem like to a person who is about to die not knowing what comes next? I mean, if you're here today and you have never given your heart to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and choose him as the person who you would like to live for now and forever, it simply means that if you should die before he comes back, you have no resurrection inheritance. You might have money, but upon death it's no, not yours anymore. It's now your kids. And they're going to do with it whatever they want to do with it. Much of what you probably wouldn't do. I mean, it's just a, a life of losing. And losing in the worst way. That's why Jesus saw that. And he said, you know what? I don't want any of my human family to experience such a tragedy. And I'd rather give my life to make sure that everyone can share in that inheritance. Today, friends, I have the resurrection inheritance. Hallelujah. Do you? Do you, friends? Praise the Lord. And there's so much more. There's so much more that the Lord has provided. I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel. Come on, y'all. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. I've learned as a pastor that the best counselor for any relationship, if it's a relationship for getting married, it's, if it's a relationship for being in a marriage, whatever the relationship is, I have learned as a pastor, the best counselor is the Lord. Amen. Been a part of so many different challenging environments where in marriages people are moving apart and they're seeking a counseling session from the pastor. Nothing is wrong with that. But a counseling session with the pastor without a personal counseling session with the Savior is going to mean nothing. Because it doesn't matter what the pastor says, you're still not going to do it. <laughs> David knew all about this thing. And David said, you know what? I bless the Lord who has given me counsel. When last have we gone to the Lord for counseling about the very thing that we're struggling with right now? Do you know he can speak to you? He can speak to me? I can't tell you. That's my best counselor. I'd rather sit to the Lord, sit with the Lord and talk to him about the person who is bothering me. And say, Lord, help me to understand what is happening there. What can I do to correct it? Are you with me? That's what I'd rather do. And you know what? Sometimes the Lord is very tough. The best message you can get for relationships that is going in the wrong direction is a message from the Lord. In fact, I've learned as a pastor, my job as a counselor is really to... To facilitate. To facilitate the session. Not to be directing and telling people what they should do. That's not my prime position. 
Because many times people step into counseling session with a pastor, they already know what they need to do. They're just very stubborn. Young people, counsel with the Lord. Sit down with him. Tell him what you're going through. Ask him to, to guide you, to show you what is my next step. What is the best path for my life at this time? That is the best way to approach 2024. To just sit down and have a counseling session with your Lord. All the people do the same thing as well. When you get up in the morning, counsel with the Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm coming this morning to hear from you. I'm struggling. And you know. <laughs> do you know the Lord knows when you struggle? I'm coming to you and I need some guidance from you. Speak to me. As I go through the day, show, show me what, what you'd like me to do with this particular situation, with this person, with my wife, or with my husband, or my children. How, how, how can I best parent my children during this time, what should I say and when? Whew. You know, Ella Stewart, many people just like to spend money. I guess they just like to spend money. They forget the counsel of the Lord and they go to the lawyer for all of their counsel and advice. Are you with me? And they get the best free advice right from the Lord. Ah, David is teaching us some good stuff. My heart, he said, also instructs me in the night season. So I, as the Lord is, is pouring into his life, he's listening to the Lord. Are you with me? He's listening. And, he, and he's not only listening but he's now willing to follow what he's hearing. It's a relationship that's going on here with David and the Lord that's just amazing. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my what? Right hand, I shall not be. In other words, I have set the Lord. It's almost like, it's almost like you have a door, or you have, I would say, three doors, and there's one particular door, that's the Lord's door. You hear me? The next door is probably the door of self, and then the third door is the door of the enemy. David is saying, you know what, that middle door of the Lord that's the door I will always walk through. I am not going to go to the left, to the right. I am going to go what? Straight through that door every time. I have ordered my life in such a way. So every day I get up, I'm spending it with the Lord first. As I go through the day, my mind is on the Lord. He's, he's guiding me. He knows we're together. And when I go to bed, I put my life in his hand. I have set before the Lord every single day as a day where I choose to be a blessing not only to myself and family, but to others as well. This life is not only for me. I have made a decision, Brother Ian, to walk with the Lord. The world is pressing me from the left and the right and coming with all of its temptations. All of its music temptations. All of its sexual temptations. But I have set before the Lord that the way I'm going to walk is in a direction whereby if the Lord provides 
a mate, and I hope he does. I hope you pray for that, Brother Shane. If the Lord provides a mate, we will court together without sex. But when we get married, we will enjoy the relationship of intimacy together. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? I've set before my eyes the way of the Lord, and I'm going to follow it no matter if the world thinks it's foolishness. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Therefore, now when you come to verse 9, verse 11, the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter, actually, they referred to these verses in the book of Acts. They actually quoted these verses in the book of Acts. So it's almost like, it's almost like they saw some really powerful stuff within this psalm, Psalm 16. And when they refer to these verses, they refer to these verses being in the likeness of Christ, not David. So when the Bible said, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices, my flesh will be what? Will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in what? She, she all is our death. It simply means the grave. Thank you. All right. Nor will you allow your only one to see corruption. The only person, well, <laughs> I, 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 let me take that back. Because there were others who were taken up, even alive. Isn't that true? Yeah. To glory. But the person here who died but did not see corruption is none other than the Holy One, Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you with me? He's, they're, they're, he's, he's pointing us back to that inheritance. You, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. Anyone needs to know what the path of life is? He says it here. In the presence, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In your presence is the fullness of what? I can tell you about that. Many people, when they, when they watch the TV and when they watch what's happening with all of the high-profile, wealthy, entertaining megastars flying private jets, spending money like it's water, they say, man, that's the exciting life. That's a life where I can do anything that I want. These people command fame all over the world. And they adore. They are adored by so many. That's the lifestyle. That's amazing that I would want. And Jesus is saying here today, the lifestyle that is best for every human being is a lifestyle that looked like the life that Jesus lived. If you want to know what the fullness of joy is, you take the book of John and just start reading. <laughs> and look at every place it talks about what Jesus is doing. And that, those are the things that we should be saying, wow. That's what I want to do, Jesus. Wow. The things that you see him doing when he's, when he's being so loving and kind to people who are in distress. The way he treats his friends with, with so much compassion and love. 
the way he ministered healing to so many around him. I mean, when you look at his lifestyle and how he lived, during that time, so many people knew about him. And his ministry. Ended up on the cross. Where he had the choice. Being God, he had the choice to go back to heaven. But he said, I can't. I can never do that. And leave Sean in this mess without a hope. I cannot do that. He gave his life on Calvary. Was raised from the dead. Father in heaven was the one who Woke him up. And the moment he got up, his life was now shared with anyone who would choose to believe. As we face the year 2024, we have a choice right now. We can face it with Jesus as our God, our provider, our protector, we can face it with Jesus as the one who is going to be our leader each day and who is going to be the one who will provide an eternity for every single person who chooses to believe. Or we can say today, Maybe next time. The story is told. Let me just read it right here. It's told by John Weston. He said, Is God indifferent to all that Indifferent, sorry, to all that is happening? By no means. God is working for the eternal blessing and salvation of all who will turn to him in repentance and faith. The world is doomed, but he is taking out of the world a people for himself. Then he said, the world is like a ship. whose crew has mutinied and murdered the captain and thrown his body overboard. Now the question arises as to who can guide the ship. Attempts are made by one and another, but all ends in failure and disaster for the ship strikes a rock and is heading for destruction. The owner hears what has happened and orders a lifeboat to be sent out immediately to save the crew. But they have murdered your son, the lifeboatman exclaimed. And then the owner said, I will pardon their awful crime, replied the owner, and, and save every man who will jump into the lifeboat. The ship is doomed and lost, but I will save out of it all who will accept being saved. You know, it's the lifeboat is right here for some of us today. 
This world, as we know, is collapsing daily. But the opportunity is alive and well for those that God know needs to jump in the lifeboat, need to say, Lord, I repent of my sins and I accept you as Lord and Savior. And then for those who are in the lifeboat, hallelujah, what a pleasure it is to say to the Lord, Father, help me to set my life on your course and to stay in the boat. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Our Father, there might be someone here right here in this church, maybe watching online, who haven't made that decision as yet to have you as a Lord and Savior. But somehow you're speaking to their hearts right now. Because maybe you know some things about 2024 that they don't. And the many possibilities of what could happen in the year ahead that could be disastrous for them. Father, I pray that you will express to them, even now at this time, how much you love them. And how much you are willing to save them. Minister to their hearts. I pray in the name of Jesus that you allow them to see that the best life they could live is the life lived with you and all the blessings and inheritances that you provide. Move them, Father, from a state of lostness, a state of helplessness, a state of hopelessness. Move them to a place where they will make that decision to be blessed with all of the blessings of forgiveness, power, and hope. I pray for those who have been walking with you, Father, who began this walk with you. They might be here today as well, but for one reason or another, life and all the temptations of this world have moved them away from the things that of heaven. Have moved them away farther more into the materialistic life of this world. And they have been walking this life away from you. But today you have brought them here. Lord, I pray that you would lovingly uh, wrap your arms around them right now and allow them to see how much you care for them and you're willing to forgive. For those folks, I pray, Lord, that they will turn to Jesus 
right now. Father, there are so many of us today. We've been on this journey with you. And Father, you did say we will encounter many trials on this journey. And as we read this psalm today, we're reminded of how much you are always available to help us. And so, Father, we also ask that you just forgive us. Remove from us anything that we have done, Father. The things, Father, that, have, that are in our lives that are completely against your will. Father, forgive us of those things. We ask that you come on the inside and do a work of restoration, a work of peace. I pray for each and every person here today who have been on this journey with you, that you will help us with all that we need to be your example within our families. To be the ones who, who, who respond with love and care and compassion. To be the ones who, who, are, who are willing to, to readily forgive. To come together. And to live uh, as a family that, that, that resembles the family above. Father, whatever is, is causing the problems within any home today, I ask for your intervention. I ask, Father, for your presence to be in every home and to bring about the peace and love and harmony that I know you love and cherish. And so... We present our lives before you. And as we go into the, the new year that is fa the new year that is fastly approaching, we ask, Lord, that your blessing and peace would be upon every single one of us here today and those who are watching. Now and forevermore, we ask this. In the name of Jesus, let the church of the living God say, Amen, amen. and Amen.